Hi everybody, it's Kelly. Welcome to my channel. Um, you might notice that I'm filming somewhere different. Usually I sit at my dining room table to do this, but um, I'm in my son's room at the moment. Um, he's at college right now in Alberta. And a couple weeks ago when I was at the office working, my husband moved everything around of his room and I have a little office until he comes back at Christmas. Then I guess I'm back out at the dining room table. And in behind us, you can see clothes on the bed because we're going away two weeks today on Halloween. So getting things ready to pack. So because of that, I thought maybe I would ad address a few questions that people who've never cruised before might have. Now, not that I were veterans by any means, but I do have some experience, so I'll share for you. Now, I'll, down below, with, I, when I upload this, I'll put a link to my website because it has at the very bottom, if you scroll all the way down, there's a list, there's a things for first time cruisers and there's a list of frequently asked questions and I'll just do some of them. Okay, just so we don't go on and on and on here. So hold on, I'm going to refer to my laptop as we go here. Just a sec, because it's got my my website on it. Okay. One of the things that people always ask, is cruising expensive? Well, not necessarily. It kind of depends. Um, if you're going to go on one of those, like, all-inclusive things in Mexico, they're probably, or, you know, Cuba or whatever, they're probably pretty similar. Because um, the, the, the all-inclusive resorts used to be cheap back in the day, but they're not really that much anymore. So it's not much of a great difference. But if you're going to go, say, if you do Europe and you want to drive around and do like, you know, Spain or Italy or whatever. And so you have to drive, you have to pay for your car, you have to pay for parking if you can get it because you Europe is, you know, not as like North America is. Um, hotels are expensive, food's expensive, all your entertainment you have to go out for etc 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 that adds up pretty quick but if you go on a cruise drinks are usually extra unless you were in one of the more luxury brands that have that included but you only unpack once you go from city to city you don't have to drive you don't have to do any of that you have a nice comfortable room it's not they're not big like hotel rooms though but they're big enough it's not you're not squished it's fine but if you're worried about being like claustrophobic -y, get a balcony, then you can crack open the sliding door and get fresh air. We always like to do that anyway, because then we have a nice view. Um, and the other thing was, oh, oh, I lost my train of thought now. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just an easy way to see places. Also too, like maybe you didn't, you might not like one place and then you know, oh, that was horrible. I never go back there. Or maybe you're and one of the stops you go to, you fell in love with it. And we like, oh, they really like to come back here. And then you at least know that in advance. And you've had a chance to check the place out and see what it's like. Now, shore excursions are not um, included in the price. But usually they're not too bad for what you get. You can go and see the sites. And it, it's, a, it's a reasonable cost. And usually you can book them ahead online on your, on your um, cruise company's website. So that sort of helps your budget a little bit because... It's already paid for and done by the time you go and sail on your cruise. So that makes it a little bit easier. So that's as far as expense goes. I don't mind number crunching. If anybody wants me to do that, that's fine. Easy enough. Um, will I get seasick? <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. Um, lots of stuff you can do to prevent that. Um, ginger candies. Peppermint actually works pretty good. Um, one of the tricks you can do, too, is to not always have an empty stomach. Keep a little bit of food in your stomach, but don't be, like, full, full, because then... Do not be gross about it. There's less sloshing around if there's a little food in your stomach. Um, my sister swears by those pressure bands. I think they call them C bands. She finds those helpful. My husband and I don't usually have a problem, but we just take a gravel every morning just in case, and that seems to be fine. Obviously, the non-drowsy ones, but you, you know what I mean. Just, just precautions, right? Because you never know. And usually those ships are so big and the stabilizers are pretty good. They don't really move a heck of a lot. You know, you... It's not that bad. But having said that, if you tend towards motion sickiness, try to be in the middle of the ship, both up and down and this way. In nautical terms, midships. Bow, stern, fore, aft. Midships, middle. That also goes for like decks. Don't be way up on deck 12 or something. Try to be lower, you know, seven, six, something like that. Because you're in like the fulcrum point of the ship, so there's less pivoty move. Like you know what I mean. Go back to your physics class from way back when. That's a thing. 
Um, but then again, too, the cruise ships know this, and those middle cabins in the category are more expensive than the cabins that are like out on the ends. Just so you know that. That's a heads up. Um, oh, yeah. Will I feel claustrophobic? I kind of touched on that already. Um, inside cabins are the cheapest, obviously, because you don't have a window. But if you're one of those people that likes to like sleep where it's really dark, perfect. Um, if you want just to have a window so you can have like light and stuff and look out, that's fine too. That's called ocean view. Is that what that category is? And then there's categories within that, depending where it is on the ship. The all cruise ships do this. This is a thing. Um, that I, and then the balcony, like I said, the rooms are not huge, but they're not eh, either. And if you feel like you need a bit more space, then pay the little extra money, get a balcony. Then you can sit out at your little table and it feels like there's more room and nice to watch the scenery go by. That's the other thing about it. Um, what was the other thing I wanted to, to talk to you guys about? What is there to do in port? Pretty much anything. Sky's the limit. Um, sometimes we just get off the ship and just take a little wander. It depends where you are, too. Um, but if you want to, if you want to go to Alaska and splash out and go on the helicopter tour, by all means, do so. If you just want to get off in Juneau, wander up and down on the street, do that too. It's up to you. Depending on your budget, what you want to do, what you feel like doing, investigate, ask me, whatever. There's tons of opportunities. Now, speaking of opportunities, the other question is, will I get bored? Well, let me tell you. And if you might see this backwards because of this whole selfie thing, but... Yeah, it looks like it is. Anyway, you get one of these newsletters... Every night, this is my princess one from last year in Alaska. And it every night, and it tells you what's going on the next day. So the, there's a little, like the front always has the blurb about your port the next day or at, or at sea or whatever's going on. And it tells about the ship and blah, blah, blah. But inside is the listing of stuff to do. This is on board all day. Runs the gamut from... Scattergories Challenge, Harmonica Class Sign Up, um, Enrichment Lecture with your, with like if your the port's coming up, like they'll have naturalists come on board and talk about that so you can go to the theater and listen to the naturalists talk about the next port. Um, Lightning Fest Art Auction, Wine Tasting, Trivia, Russian Folk Art Seminar, that was because of Alaska. This is just examples. So, the, yeah, two full pages of stuff to do on board. And it tells you where and when. So, if you're bored on a cruise, not to be mean about it, but that's your own fault. Not the cruise lines. There's always something to do. And why not just go on vacation and just hang out by the pool? That's a something to do. Sit on your balcony. Watch the sea go by. That's a something to do. If you're one of those people that really has to be active all the time and do something all the time, you can find something to do all the time. That's not a problem. Just so you know. Um, as far as formality goes, depends on the cruise line. We have most experience with Princess, and we like doing formal night. Like, in two weeks when we go to Mexico, we sail on November the 2nd from... San Pedro, south of Los Angeles. That's the port of Los Angeles. And then the very next day, there's no port. It's a sea day. So usually they do a formal night then because then people are not going off port and you have time to come back and, you know, do your hair and press your suit and whatever. So we are going to go to formal night because well, Tony and I don't mind. We've done, we don't care, but we've done it. Our, our friend, this is only our friends that we're going with their second cruise. My daughter is somewhat of a cruise veteran, but she still doesn't mind it. Um, and the two friends she's going with have never cruised before. So for the sake of everybody, all seven of us are going to go and do the formal night. And they will take pictures of you. Like, they'll have the photographers up. And, like, we've done that before. And we've given family family portraits away at Christmas. And it's a great thing to do. If you want to, you know, like the four of us, we did it in Alaska. It's perfect. Um, my husband's going to bring a suit. I have a nice sundress, flowers, I wear heels, I put on the bling. You know, do it up a bit, right? The rest of the time... My husband wears, like, if you want to go in the dining room. That's provided you even want to go in the dining room. Um, my husband wears, like, like khakis and a golf shirt. That's fine. And I usually put on maybe another sundress that's not as fancy or 
a skirt and a, a blingy, a fancy top and, you know, blingy flip flops and earrings and, you know, yeah, you don't just go into the dining room in shorts and a t-shirt. That's kind of, bleh. Um, that's princess. Celebrities pretty similar though. They have sort of like a country club casual kind of vibe going on. Um, if you want formal, if you're really into that whole dressing up la di da formally stuff, go Cunard. Queen Mary 2, transatlantic. Yeah. Apparently it's hugely popular. People love it. That's your, that's entirely your cup of tea though. So you don't have to have a tux. And having said that, you don't even need to eat in the dining room. You, we are, pl we are planning to have the early, the early seating. Like we sit, we sit down at five. What well, about the, the time we eat? It's like six ish, which is fine. Then we can go off and do the show and whatever. There is another or later seating, but you can also go whenever you want. Like you can go in between a time and you can just go make a reservation. Hey, we want to eat at six fifteen or whatever. That's fine. You have to sign up for any time dining, but it's doable. Um, you can always go to the buffet. All ships have a buffet. That's fine too. Um, usually there's stuff out on deck like burgers, hot dogs, things like that, depending on the ship, uh, depending on the cruise line. Um, the one we're, the one we're going on coming up is the Royal Princess and it has, um, an artisan pizza place, Alfredo's. We had it on the Grand Princess a few years back and it's like thin crust pizza with like cool toppings and stuff. That's included. That's not extra. That's not a specialty restaurant. That's, that's free. That's in the whole cost of everything. Um, Having said that, those specialty restaurants, we are going to do that um, because it's one of the girls' birthdays. So the seven of us are going to go one night. We already booked it. Um, the Royal Princess has Sabatini's Italian restaurant. So we, the cover charge was, I think it was $29 US each. And then you get in there and you, whatever you want to eat is fine. It's fine. And the food is amazing. I can't wait. I'm salivating already. Um, and when we book this cruise was a year ago summer. I wasn't even an agent then. It was with, with our agent, who is now my colleague. Um, there was a the sale called Sip and Sale. So we got the beverage package with it. Um, so we don't have to worry about paying extra for like a glass of wine or whatever. Now, having said that, again, the beverage package. People are like, well, you never get your money's worth. We think that is not the point. Okay? This is our opinion. You're entitled to your own, but... For And most people we cruise with, like my folks and our friends, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. That's not the point. You either get your beverage package as part of a sale or you just pay for it ahead of time. Then it is done. Out of sight, out of mind. Because I'm on vacation and I'm going to Mexico. And I want to sit up on deck and have a margarita. And I don't want to be in my head going, well, that's $7 US plus 20% gratuity, but then that's going to be like nine fifty Canadian... I'm not doing math on vacation. No, thank you. Done. So, finished. Now, maybe I don't drink $40 or whatever the hell it is worth of booze a day. And that's not even, that's not even, but that includes pop. That's on, you can't, that's not free. That's extra. So, soda is in there. If I want to have a Diet Coke, I have a Diet Coke. That also includes the specialty coffees. So, if I feel like having two lattes in the morning, I will. Because I've already paid for it. So, that's the scoop on the beverage package stuff. Now, lots of people are like, no, no way. I'm only, I don't drink that much. I don't, well, that's fine. Up to you. If you want to just pay by your drinks, pay your drinks by the each and have it on your bill at the end of the cruise, that's fine. That's what old school was. Anyway, there was no beverage package. There was no prepaying your gratuities. There was none of that. Everything you paid for on board was paid on board. And that the end of the cruise, voila, there's your bill. That's what's going on your credit card. <sighs> Yeah, you know, so I guess the cruise lines wised up and started doing this package deal thing. Anyway, so for right now, that's all I'm going to tell you. Um, if you need any more information, I'll link my website. And otherwise, you can just send me an email. I'll put that there too. Bye now.